Happy New Year to my water signs, Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. Welcome to that Capricorn new moon. You'll find the timestamps for your rising signs listed below. Hello Cancer Rising, welcome to your horoscope for the Capricorn new moon happening on January the 11th at 10.58pm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. Happy New Year! I hope that your journey from that calendar to this calendar was a gentle one. I hope that you're feeling optimistic and rested and if not, that's okay because the Lunar New Year starts for the Chinese on the 10th of February this year and if that doesn't work, then the Zodiacal New Year starts with the new moon in Aries the following month. So we've got plenty of time. Take the pressure off. <laughs> and actually this new moon, this moment, this time of the year is going to be a beautiful, beautiful ceremony for you, Cancer Rising. I'd love for you to think about your seventh house, which means I'd love for you to think about those that you love, those that you are in coupling with, relationship with. This could be romantic or otherwise, but it's the people that sort of complete your little figure eight. If Cancer's over here, Capricorn's here. Cancer's here, Capricorn's here. And the moon, while uncomfortable in Capricorn because it's in the opposite house uh, sign to as to where it's most comfortable which is yours you're still a cancer so you still can understand if there's some hiccups around the uh, vocabulary of intimacy cancers and capricorns make pretty great teammates capricorns really great at like having the focus you're also great at having the focus too, but in a much more kind of yielding, uh, gentle, emotional way. Capricorn's great at sort of climbing the ladder, getting things done, fixing the fence, working. Capricorn loves a task. If you can give a Capricorn a job, they'll do it. And they'll learn everything about it and they'll get it done. And they'll go on to the next thing. So when thinking about those that you love, when thinking about maybe potentially inviting in the next grand adventure in that space for you, or perhaps it's ways in which you are going to commit to continuing to work on the relationships that you have right now, it doesn't matter. Either way, a new moon is a night for setting our intention, for focusing in on that. At 20 degrees of Capricorn, where the sun and the moon will meet, forming this moment, in Tarot we talk about the Four of Pentacles. And this is an interesting image. I quite like it, although I am a Capricorn sun, so this card has a lot to do with my astrology. And like any Tarot card, like any planet, any sign, there's always a light and a shade, this face and that face to everything. But with this card, the Four of Pentacles, you can see this person is really convinced and really committed. They're sort of holding on to what it is that they have with a kind of stubbornness. Now, it could be read as they're being a bit of a stingy bastard and they're not giving out, they're not sharing it around. They're sort of being quite rigid and holding on. It could be also that they're sort of planting their seeds, their feet for the future. They're standing with the sort of city or the community behind them. And that can be read as kind of like turning a cold shoulder to that world. But what I look at in this particular reading for you, Cancer Rising, is I look at it as a sort of commitment for you to make in regard to re-entry into intimacy and as I said, it doesn't have to be romantic, but as far as like opening yourself up to other folks, as far as kind of allowing, taking the offer, if there's a shoulder to lean on, um, I think that there's something nice here that the new moon in Capricorn, strict as it is, uncomfortable as it is, a bit cold and distant as it may be, there is something 
innately wrapped up in your nature that knows what to do with every phase of the moon, every colour, every texture. So if there's a feeling of like starting from the ground up in your intimate world, in your relationships, or if there's perhaps there's kind of this feeling of like losing gravity for a time but coming back down to earth, I can probably explain that a little bit in the way that Pluto is just about to leave Capricorn and enter Aquarius. Ten days after this new moon, Pluto, the planet that does level, decimate, destroy, dredge up, is leaving Capricorn and entering Aquarius. It happened last year for, for several months. It's happening again this year. There's going to be a final crescendo of this kind of feeling in Capricorn in September. So from September of this year until January of 2025, there will be another last hurrah, a pivotal, I might say, moment where Pluto dredges up, reveals, decimates Capricornian structures of power, Capricornian uh, sort of shapes that are built like a triangle or a mountain where those few at the very, very top are masters of their domain and everybody else at the bottom is in subordination to them. Mm. I don't think that this is the way that your relationships operate, Cancer Rising, because Capricorn also has a really beautiful side to it as well. Some way to read Capricorn would be that that sort of slow ascent up the mountain to reach the precipice, to stand there victorious in what they've discovered is to share with those at the bottom of the mountain. In the esoteric philosophy of astrology, that is kind of a story that is given to the goat of Capricorn, that they're not doing it for themselves in icy solitude, for personal gain. They're making that journey, make, committing themselves to that hard work to then go down to the bottom of the mountain again and show folks up from the path that they've cleared. But I think that Pluto in your seventh house, and particularly at this final degree, will have been really shaking some things up. There may have been folks that you have had to say goodbye to that made up your seventh house that you loved so sincerely. There may be souls that uh, Pluto uh, urged us all to, to bid a fond farewell at this time. If that's the case, Cancer Rising, I'm, I really, you've got my absolute empathy and my warmth and my tenderness and I, I sit with you in, in that grief. And I don't give you this astrology to be like, well, that's why, because how can you make sense of the senseless? But this is why I do this work. I do this work to give some sense of context to the events in our lives and to perhaps take the offer of the mirror of the cosmos and look up and see the reflection of the universe down here. It takes a certain kind of talent to face those difficult emotions, things like grief. But I think as a Cancer rising, you're the right person to do it because you are unafraid to feel those things. Just like Capricorn is unafraid to do the work and to go, 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 you're unafraid to feel. And so there's a lovely synergy again, as I said, between the two of you. But this is a new moon and you know that we set our intent. So who do you love? Who do you want to love? Who do you feel that you might be ready to let in over the next maybe six months if we go from new moon to full moon? Maybe the next 12 months if we go from new moon to new moon? Or perhaps just as a sort of silent, gentle commitment to yourself that through the difficult emotions, through the pain of loss, you are still a cancer rising and you're still here as a solo soul mission to love and to teach us to lead the way in matters of the heart. You're the chariot, we know. We know that you will go forward. 
with this, no matter what. We know that when it comes to the ceremony, the ritual of grief, you will honour that too. You know it's the right time to allow the body, allow the water to move. There's some really lovely support with this new moon. There's also a bit of sort of uh, pressure as well. The support is between the sun and the moon and Uranus in Taurus in your 11th house of friendship, the human condition, good fortune, the greater scope of connection. So between your 7th house of intimate relationships and the revolutions that are occurring in your sense of, of where you belong in the human species or your ideas that you have about how to quite Obviously, the systems are not working, but what, what can you feel? What are you going to activate? Who are you going to band together with in order to uh, revolutionise some of these systems? The way, that we op- the way that we speak to each other, the way that we operate, the way that society is structured, the haves and the have-nots, you know, all of those sorts of things. That's a nice beautiful moment of support at this new moon so perhaps it would be really great to be open about these things with folks that you really do love the pressure is coming between the sun and the moon and the dragon in your 10th house in aries which is your most public self it's your career if you if that's what you do but doesn't have you don't have to have a career it's just how you're publicly sort of perceived what you wish to be kind of known for so the dragon is chomping away there for the next um, year. You know, we know because there's going to be an extra focus, an extra bit of information there for you as time goes on. But I really think that potentially the, the what is what Pluto has taken away from your seventh house, what Pluto has taken from the area in which you show love and receive love, there's a clearing here. There's a real empty space that your ability as a cardinal water sign, as a warrior of our feelings, are the right one to feel. There is some support between your 10th house and also Venus in your 6th house as well. So back to repetition, back to those systems that you have in place that keep your mind regulated back to uh, however you choose to process the things that you're going through as well, Cancer Rising. So that's nice to think about too. Now, the generation that is to come, Pluto in Aquarius, is a very different story. I've said it to you in a horoscope before, and I'll continue to say it, but if Aquarius represents the people and Pluto represents power, I see Pluto in Aquarius as power to the people. Aquarius is, sits in your eighth house, Cancer rising, and this is how our resources are interwoven with others, how we actually approach things like grief and sadness, how we bond and connect with sincerity and the processes by which we let go. So to have Pluto here sort of moving through this for the next 20 years, check your chart if you have Aquarius placements because there's going to be things that feel quite profound. But it doesn't matter if you've got nothing in there because we'll all be feeling this power to the people. We'll be feeling and activating and working on and with the creation of new structures, new systems, new ways of relating to each other, new ways of helping and supporting one another. Perhaps there's some things that you've been learning around saying goodbye that will stay with you and that will perhaps, indeed, feed some of your motivation moving forward too. That maybe, maybe not. New Moon, Capricorn, I want you to manifest connection. And you'll be very, very surprised with the results. And if you don't have the energy, you don't have to. But maybe if you just have a little think about the prospect of loving or loving again, see how that feels in the body, see how that sits with you. It's 
a great place to start. Because if the body says, not at this time, we trust. If the mind says, not at this time, that's something to have a further conversation with. so hard to say goodbye. It's so beautiful to really feel that gratitude of the time that you did have together. And it takes as long as it takes to, you know that there's no use in thinking about this. It's this. As memories come up, we sit with them. There's something that I probably want to speak further to. Yeah, we'll speak further to about your 10th house. Your public facing self. Perhaps what you wish to be known for. Perhaps your career if you have one. But there's major focus on this part of your chart this year. We know this cancer rising. I've made mention of it quite often and I'll continue to. But maybe in this urgency of striving towards the 10th, you know, if you're climbing the corporate ladder or if you're sort of, you know, keeping all of the plates spinning, if you run your own business or there's something here about credit and there's going to be more of the same here for you um, as the year goes by. But because this square is speaking, you know, quite directly from your 7th house to the 10th house um, and it's a really direct message too, there might be something here about um, time and a place for everything and perhaps know your limits um, this year. You may not have experienced grief so sincerely, um, but there's definitely something around not letting the seventh house fall by the wayside as the journey to the tenth is so um, uh, palpable. It's so taking so much of your attention. I mean, the Capricorn in us all would be focused on the tenth house, you know, the precipice. We've got to keep going, keep getting here. But there's so much stuff that's happening in the astrology of 2024 and 2025 and 2026. We're really driving into it that I reckon that as much as you are possibly able to really find out, carve out those pockets of time where you can sit with your, you sit with yourself and not feel obligated to, to that. Perhaps there's things around building a team for yourself or expanding or at least just sort of like having that conversation in your mind um, there might be something about, okay, so I work, 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 but at the end of it all, is that what I'm going to be proud of? I mean, that's, I'm not, yeah, that's quite a cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. I think let's take this moment with the new moon in Capricorn in your seventh house. Let's really focus in on connection and let's focus in on the ceremony of having to say goodbye and what you will indeed need to support yourself and what others will need to provide you as far as support goes to. You're not, and you know this, you teach Capricorn this actually, but I'll say it anyway. You are not your work and your work alone. Hold up your accomplishments under your chin for approval. That's Capricorn. That's what you're here to remind them that that's not always necessary, that they are lovable just as they are by doing nothing, just by simply existing. And so by providing that advice to your beloveds, your seventh house, you must always remember to provide that advice to yourself too. And that if you've been feeling melancholy or if you have been going through loss at this time, then when it shows up, you're allowed to feel it and perhaps there can be systems in place where those that are in support of your work can shoulder some of the extra responsibility if things get a little tough. 
That's your reading. Manifest love. Don't you just love love, Cancer? I love love. <laughs> Much love to you. If you're still here with me, chuck me a goat in the comments, please, in honour of our Capricorn friends. Um, you can subscribe to my horoscopes uh, for 10 Australian dollars a month over at buymeacoffee.com forward slash umarubi. You can tip me on that same website too. And you can organize a birth chart reading with me at my website, umaruby.com. I'll draw you one up that looks like that, and I'll read it to you over Zoom. If I have read for you before, you can head back to Umaruby and maybe pick yourself a femme, a truth, a love, a growth, or a magic reading. I incorporate the astrology and also lots of tarot in those readings too. Thanks for being here with me, Cancer. I'm looking forward to this year and I'm looking forward to being as articulate as I possibly can be with what I see, what I know, and how to be of best help. So here's to it. I'll see you in two weeks at the Leo full moon. Take care, love. Bye. Hello, Scorpio rising. Happy New Year. Welcome to your horoscope for the Capricorn new moon happening on January the 11th at 10.58 p.m. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me, how are you feeling? Have you found your feet in this uh, new calendar year? If you haven't, don't worry, because uh, we've got the Chinese Lunar New Year to celebrate on the 10th of February. And then also there's the Zodiacal New Year happening at the new moon in Aries. So that's in March. So we've got lots and lots of time to get it together. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. But I think that I can probably give you some explanation as to why you might be feeling a little bit of pressure. Um, Capricorn is the sign that has us working and our face pressed up against the grindstone until our nose comes off. They love to work. They love it hard. They love it long <laughs> and they like it nice and dry. Um, so there is sometimes that feeling, especially around this period of the year where it's kind of like, okay, well, that's enough. Enough is enough. You know, you've had your fun, get back to it. Um, so do with that what you will. You can probably also feel some kind of tremor in the air too. So 10 days after this new moon in Capricorn, which we'll speak about in a minute, uh, the planet Pluto enters Aquarius again. So leaves finally the 29th degree of Capricorn and ticks over into Aquarius. Now, the show's not over yet because come September the 2nd, uh, by that point, Pluto will already be, re be have station retrograde and will enter back into Capricorn to that 29th degree for its final hurrah. So September of this year, September, October, November, December, there will be that final shift with Pluto in Capricorn at 29 degrees. And then from January of 2025, Pluto will re-enter Aquarius and be there for the next 20 years. All of that is to say that this observation that you've made around the continual revelation, more things are being revealed by folks that have held power. I always think about everything that we have come up against, like the last decade specifically, but, you know, let's face it, like it's been a long time coming, the amount of revelation, things are being revealed, being dredged from below the surface to be looked at in relationship to hierarchy, in the relationship to dominant power systems. Those at the top, those that have so much are also feeling those tremors and are getting quite desperate too. And what it looks like in the astrology is that September to January of next year is going to be a period of history that we'll never forget. So let's just keep that in our back pocket, not to make it tense or anything like that, but there's lots of things that are sort of um, continuing to be unveiled, revealed. Um, there's a lot of folks that have done some terrible things, that there's more information that is being dredged up from below. Um, so we've got to figure out how we're going to um, sort of roll with that shock. 
Let's go back to this new moon, though, because I think that there could be some really helpful aspects and helpful conversations that we can have. Capricorn on your birth chart, Scorpio rising, rules the third house, which is the house of the goddess. <laughs> it's the house of our local village, our home environment, and it's where we enact private rituals. It's where we read our tarot if we feel like it, but it's where we really do worship the goddess. In Hellenistic astrology in the ancient days, there was so many different ways that folks would worship the goddess. And now in the contemporary world, um, there's also a multitude of different ways that we all worship the goddess too. I do it with music often. I will waste weeks just with my playlists on listening and worshipping, crying, exulting, having a great time. I also do a little tarot, I'm not sure if you've noticed. <laughs> but there's many different things that I, I also, in the old days, used to be a stage performer. And so I used to um, emulate, I used to try and look as much like how I so dearly wanted to look um, on stage and worship at the altar of my, my goddesses, my chosen goddesses. Um, did that for such a long time, got many happy memories um, of over a decade of that kind of thing. But for you, this is a time of setting some sort of intention. This is what we do at a new moon. This is definitely what we do at a Capricorn uh, new moon. They will be very upset if you miss this one. So when thinking about where you're living, your village, your ritual practices, perhaps what you're sort of like um, putting together as far as something, maybe it's a body of um, writing or maybe there's some things that you've been learning over the last bit of time that you're thinking, okay, maybe I can use this new moon to sort of set myself a date. If you wanted to, you can look ahead six months and maybe at the Capricorn full moon in June this year, that can be a nice bit of chunk of time. And not to put any pressure on yourself because we really do have to sort of maybe work with Pluto's disintegration of some of Capricorn's um, harsher um, behaviours, which is that sort of pressure. I have a Capricorn sun on my birth chart, so I know all too well about kind of work being the be-all, end-all and not being really able to see past that because I don't really think that I'm worth much else. That's part of the Capricorn journey is to kind of reconcile that. Maybe you can look on your birth chart too and see if you've got any Capricorn placements. So I don't wish to sort of have this moment of intention be like a setup for failure, but let's see that there's a sort of song being sung over into your seventh house of your nearest and dearest relationships. So Taurus rules that area of your chart, right? Scorpio rising, Taurus rules your love runs, your uh, colleagues, people who you work with, um, also people that are intimate in your life in different ways too, not always for good in the old days anyway in Hellenistic astrology. But let's, yeah, let's be sort of sweet about it because there's obviously Uranus is still there. So that kind of... Um, sort of rejuvenation of that area is ongoing for you and that's where the sun and the moon are speaking quite fondly to the revolution of your intimate relationships that you've been experiencing on and off gently not always but for the past like five years um, there's been perhaps metamorphoses and that's kind of natural like I'm not a wizard but but the, this moon is speaking specifically to it so there might be a link that you can sew between your seventh house of your intimates and your third house of your village your goddess worship there might be some folks that you can open up to around this time or perhaps you already have and perhaps there's potential to start some sort of project or start something together that brings folks together. I really think that 2024, it's paramount that we work together. And I'm speaking possibly in kind of magical terms when it comes to things like a coven and stuff like that. I don't belong to one. I used to, I think. In fact, I belonged to a few in the old days. At present, it's gentle there's there hasn't been a sort of moment yet of like directly coming in in together and working with 
the energies of the planets, but also working with our best intentions at heart, trying as hard as we can to create good in the world. That might be a beautiful little, uh, little sweet little prayer that you can say to yourself. I'm working with this so I can do the best that I can. I can create good in this world. The pressure is that the sun and the moon at 20 degrees of Capricorn are also in tandem with the support from Uranus forming square with the dragon in the sixth house. So this is where we think about your health. This is where you're going to be really focused over 2024 Capricorn rising is there's going to be an ex extra dollop of focus on your physical body, on your health, and how that's going. Remember, there's also things about the rhythm and repetition and the grind in the sixth house too, and that's all good. But let's really, really definitely focus on health. Keep it in tip-top condition. That would be really awesome. There's lots of focus here in Aries this year and there's lots of conjunctions that happen exactly um, over the next six months. So we'll talk about it more um, as we gear up for the first eclipse in Aries of this year that happens in April, but I just wanted to bring that up too. There's some other lovely things that are going on though. So it's kind of, there's also a like, burst of enthusiasm from Mars in Capricorn at five degrees has formed an exact trine with Jupiter in Taurus at five degrees. So yeah, there's something here about the coven, the group, the little collective. There's something about your private practice, your private goddess worship practice that could afford to be maybe perhaps shared or perhaps there could be some things or some um, exam even just some examples that you're getting or some advice from your seventh house that could be really helpful great great momentum to learn and to um, hone in on those crafts those those little things that you do throughout the day that help you feel grateful help you feel protected and help you feel beautiful that's another part of the goddess worship too in the third house is a bit of glamour spells. So pop your lippy on. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get you some tarot, I think, Scorpio rising. I think I've covered everything. It's chockers this year, I will say, not to um, spook you. Um, I'm looking forward to it, some of it. Some of it I'm really not. Um, however, I feel kind of... And I'm not sure if it's because I limited my caffeine intake today. Speaking of sixth house, um, FYI, just when things like anxiety show up for me, um, I'm very, very proud of myself that I'm working on listening to my body and what parts of my body and what is that feeling? Because it's a physical feeling, isn't it? Anxiety, it's sort of like, it's a, it can keep you short of breath um and yeah i had a pretty hectic day yesterday i also had some very sad news on christmas day um which i'll tell you about another time uh but this sort of feeling here of um anxiousness um but i separated that feeling from what was going on in my mind and in my mind i was feeling quite capricorn and like right okay let's get this organized let's get this year off on the right foot um, and I ran out of coffee this morning, didn't have one until lunchtime and went and bought one, a little latte, um, and my heart isn't up in my throat. I don't know if that's completely, um, irrelevant for you. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we're focusing on, on the body, on the health. Okay, so I got the Empress here, which is really a beautiful image of fecundity and growth and also a great representation of Venus. So let's chat about this too. So Venus is at 15 degrees in your second house at this new moon. 
Scorpio rising. And that's where we talk about your values. That's where we talk about your coin, how that's kind of coming in for you and what you're going to do with it moving forward as well. And so Venus is an exact trine, 15 degrees with Chiron in Aries in your sixth house, 15 degrees. That's really nice. I'm glad that we spoke about this kind of um, focus on the sixth house for you this year. And what I like about this is it kind of feels like tenderizing. It feels kind of like um, a gentle support. I'm sure that Venus and Chiron um, were like super sweet to each other. And I'm sure that um, there would be a great opportunity for Venus to, I don't know, I've got this image of sort of like, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of being unwell, um, Scorpio rising, and that could be in, in any, you know, there's many, many parts of ourselves that can have a difficult time. Our physical health, absolutely. Our mental health, absolutely. Our spiritual health. I'm not sure if you've ever had the experience of someone staying with you, holding vigil as you process and as you get better, as you heal, as you get strong. Um, it is something that stays with you and sometimes it can feel really really uh difficult or embarrassing because in certain ways that our minds operate a lot of us are quite ashamed perhaps when we're vulnerable or unwell and we'd much prefer not to be a burden or we'd much prefer not to be looked at we'd not much we'd, we'd much prefer not to to have this assistance but with grace and with a beautiful femme sort of nurturing kind of feeling um, you get lifted and supported through no one's going to do anything for you well that's not true perhaps it's a moment where people will be doing things for you but as far as getting better that's really up to the organism isn't it the body the mind the spirit finds its strength again and I think that there's something here there's a little conversation around someone who's a little bit caustic and perhaps a little bit, um, perhaps, mm, maybe not so yielding, but there's someone here that I can see that has been really direct with you and really like smart, really intelligent and has kind of um, provided you with this uh, nurturing, this um, opportunity to heal or this safe space to heal um, but they've also given you some very direct solutions, some intellect, some, some intelligences have come to them and they've, they've shot you the truth. But there's also a beautiful counterweight to that with someone who's also really egging you on and sort of has like a really beautiful kind of like, they're leading by example here too, but they're sort of showing you the mirror. They're sort of like, you are so gorge, you know, like this, we, we can get you, we can get you well, you know, whatever you need, we've got you. There's, they're working together. It's a king and a queen, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything as far as gender. But there's, there's a twosome here that are sort of supporting you, or perhaps they will support you as the year goes by. Perhaps we're sort of gently, not that I'm a fortune teller, but perhaps there's in moments where things get tough for you, or if they do, Scorpio rising, there is a, this twosome that is like... Um, they have a lovely light and shade to their form of care. That's Gorge. I'm glad we spoke about that. I hope that was helpful, Scorpio rising. Happy new moon. Um, be direct with your intentions. Capricorn would love that. And think about how you're going to worship the goddess for the coming six months, the coming 12 months, for the rest of your life. But yeah, feel that sort of, there is some, some lovely aspects going on, great conversations to have at points in the chart where there will be further conversations as the year goes on that might be a bit stickier. Um, if you're still here with me, throw me a goat in the comments, please. That would be great. I'd love that. Um, you can support my work at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Ruby. You can subscribe for 10 Australian dollars a month to these horoscopes, or you can throw some money in the tip jar if that's uh, what you'd like to do. If I've not met you before uh, face to face, I can read your birth chart. I'll draw you one. They look like that. 
and I'll read it to you over Zoom. So head to umaruby.com and choose the spirit reading. If I have read for you before, you can also go to Uma Ruby and you can choose yourself a femme, a truth, a love, a growth, or a magic reading. Much love to you, Scorpio Rising. I'll be with you in two weeks and we're going to chat all about the full moon in Leo uh, and all of the intricacies that that moment entails for all of us. Big love. Bye. Hello, Pisces Rising. Welcome to the new year and to your horoscope for the Capricorn new moon that's happening on the 11th of January at 10.58pm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. I hope that you found your passage gently into 2024. The astrological footnotes of this whole year start now. They start in January. We can look to this new moon in Capricorn to set our intentions quite sincerely. And then 10 days after that, the planet Pluto is going to enter into Aquarius. Now we've had lots of big chats about what that means. And it kind of feels like the changing of a generation, but also the changing of an era. Pluto has been in Capricorn since the year 2008 and with its presence has been bringing multiple examples of obliteration of pre-existing power structures. If Capricorn the sign is a workhorse, if Capricorn is kind of climbing a mountain to reach the very, very top, then you can see that on a global kind of feeling, Capricorn for all of us represents hierarchy and domination and so since 2008 with its kind of like first song on the playlist being oh what about a beautiful like global financial crisis and a market crash that'd be awesome in 2008 well now with Pluto's grand exit from Capricorn, you can sort of see that there's kind of like a similar kind of feeling to the way that people are relating to either their work, their resources, what they actually can hold on to, and the kind of like gross kind of realisation that we're all coming to, some of us a bit sooner than others, that the structures in which humankind operates under at present are not working and so perhaps things do need to change and change they will so this year 2024 is going to start off as i said on the 21st of january with pluto's exit and then entry into aquarius and then come september there will be one last hurrah so pluto will be retrograde by then and will re-enter capricorn at 29 degrees for one last hallelujah and then the next year in 2025 it will enter aquarius again in january on the 20th full time so whatever shows up for us this year pisces rising around things like sort of revelation about people in positions of power and things further things being revealed further, further things being brought up from beneath the surface bad behavior lies cheating all of those sorts of things will come to a real head this year we're going to brace ourselves but also then we're going to realize that pluto is actually going to be in aquarius for the next 20 years come 2025 and so the last time that Pluto was there in Aquarius, because it takes 248 years to go around the zodiac, the last time was in the late 1700s. So I think it was 1777 that it first entered Aquarius. And thinking about Aquarius, what that sign represents in contrast to Capricorn, Aquarius represents the people the power of the mind it's an air sign a fixed air sign there's grand solutions that show up and, and and reveal themselves in the sign aquarius there's kind of forward thinking looking to the future there's also with this sort of disintegrating destructive kind of feeling that pluto brings with it there is something of 
kind of invasion that kind of feels that yeah just something gently that we'll talk about i'm saying this because the last time that pluto was in aquarius and the repercussions of that on the land in which i stand was when the uh, first fleet arrived in australia and colonized this entire land and took it for europe so not to say that that's going to you know happen again but we're going to sort of keep our eyes and ears open and you can probably already understand that with the amount of language that is circulating around these topics and what we lived through last year in australia as far as the injustice of not providing our indigenous citizens with a voice in the constitution of this country that old bit of paper moving forward for the next 20 years we're going to have to work together and be like okay well where are we going to make these reparations there was a lot of grief that was felt at that last libra eclipse i'm sure that you're aware of that if you live down my way and of course globally we also witnessed a multi multiplicity of injustice injustices all in that week um, which was heartbreaking but if we're going to use the astrology for anything, we're going to use it to give us a sense of hope. We're going to use it to strategize too. We're actually going to put on our Capricorn costume and really think to ourselves and to our others, to our community, the people that we love, how are we going to work on this and work with this? We're not going to allow this to happen to us again or to people that we love again. So we'll bully down on that, we'll sit with that kind of prospect. Um, but let's zone in on the full moon, the new moon, I should say, on the 11th, because here there might be some doorways opening for a bit of strategy. Capricorn, as I said, is a cardinal earth, so there's an incredible work ethic, there's an incredible drive and focus in Capricorn. There sometimes can be a limitation to the other side of that coin because Capricorn is so head first when it comes to working really hard. The sun and the moon are going to conjoin at 20 degrees of Capricorn and that's our night of manifestation, that's our night of setting our intention I should say, being quite clear with ourselves and quite direct like Capricorn would be insofar as what we are going to work with energetically for the next uh, six months until there's a full moon in Capricorn at which we can review and reflect on our hard work over this period. But at 20 degrees of Capricorn in tarot, we look to the four of pentacles, which may be a card that you've seen in readings gone by. I like this card, some folks don't, and it's kind of, you know, well, I guess with every card there's always two sides, three sides, five sides, seven sides to, to each and every image. There's something kind of definitely focused about the chap in this card. They're kind of hanging on quite tightly to what they have, but their back is to the, you know, city or the, the group, the 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 community behind them they're kind of holding on to it quite strictly one way of looking at this would be to sort of talk about themes of like setting the goal at this time pisces maybe you can sort of work with the feeling of capricorn and kind try and you know try it on for size and focus um perhaps there's distractions around that it will sort of quieten as time goes on so you can really drop into this thing and and start writing some lists about where you want to go but another thing here i just have just an interesting feeling around the image of this card and also the display of um political anti-heroes at present that are gripping as tight as they can to their power and their uh, supremacy but they're rapid, rapidly slipping through their fingers and so you can feel that kind of like desperation almost perhaps from this image too hmm perhaps there are things that you can look forward to Pisces as far as feeling a little bit more like not an authority but kind of feeling you've been learning quite a lot over the last years so maybe there's something in there that you can be sort of more direct with your uh, motivations and your intentions specifically when you're thinking about your friends your um, 
close relationships, but also like the that kind of phrase, you know, the human condition. We're really we're really going to have to protect one another this year. Pisces rising, and so Capricorn rules your eleventh house, which speaks to all of those topics: community, a sense of humanity, a sense of good fellowship, good friendship. So, this is a great area of your life to look at, especially if you've been maybe absent over the past time or if there's been kind of... I mean, as I, I said it before, I'm not a wizard. Like, the last four years have been an absolute metamorphosis for so many of us. And sometimes when thinking about the ways that thing, the way that things used to be, there can be a bit of a lamentation there. Perhaps there's, you know, friends that you've not spoken to in a very long time that you kind of really would like to, um, but you feel that there's, like, too much time has gone on, like, in between time, and that sort of grows with the more time that travels on, the, the greater the chasm kind of feels. If that's how you're kind of feeling at this time, Pisces Rising, I really would highly recommend just being direct, being focused, and just saying it. Um, you may not get a response of arms wide open from everybody, but if you're keeping yourself from making contact with your community because of things like shame or embarrassment or, um, you know, nobody likes me, everyone hates me, I'm going to go eat some worms kind of feeling, then maybe at this new moon on the 11th, um, you can be direct with yourself, direct with why you want to reach out again. Of course, things won't be the same because nothing ever really is, you know. We sort of grow and move and evolve and change. However, there is that beautiful option to come back into company with folks as the person that you are now that might be very different to times gone by, but just as lovable and just as um, probably at your core quite similar. And if these folks really know you quite well, then they uh, will recognise you instantly. <laughs> um, but let's also have a little think about how the sun and the moon are speaking to other points in the zodiac too. So there's something happening at the same time. So the good news is that there is a lovely trine, so uh, earth sign to earth sign, a trine of support with the planet Uranus in Taurus, which is in your third house. And this is the house of the goddess. This is the house of your private rituals, the way that you do your spell work, the way that you're possibly putting together bits and pieces and kind of rerouting your life as far as how you're going to communicate your your you know essence from from now on uranus does bring with it absolute revolution they kind of flip the table and knock everything over wherever they go sometimes for good sometimes for bad and so that's why you know we've got to remember that um not every sort of act of purging um or act of uh revolution um, is an honourable one. That sounded clunky, but I hopefully there's room for complexity here in this conversation, Pisces rising. In any event, on your birth chart, this is what we're kind of working with as far as being free of those eclipses from the last 20 months. Um, you are being sort of drawn here like a magnet anyway, sort of like, oh yeah, where's the village, babe? Where's the village? Where can you be yourself? Um, I listen to the most beautiful song uh, which I have known for ages, but it's um, called Burn the Witch by Radiohead and I've just had it on repeat for the past couple of weeks. It makes me freaking bawl and laugh at the same time. I love that song, but there's a line in it that goes, well, the song's quite simple. It's, the chorus is Burn the Witch. I won't try and imitate Tom York, but then the second um, line of the chorus is We Know Where You Live. And so... Yeah, there's something in there. I'm getting a bit goosebumps, but there is something in there that we've got to sort of always be very protective and gentle and mindful that our witch is sometimes a little bit shy to come out. Um, especially, especially now. One, it might seem a bit frivolous. Two, it might feel a bit unsafe. Um, but I always think of the witch. I always think of, um, yeah spell work in the third house it's the house of the goddess where else are you going to do your spell work 
So this sun, this moon, this new moon connection is supportive or Uranus is supportive of this this new moon. There's a beautiful conversation there. The difficulty is in exactly the new moon is also squaring off, so a harsh, harsher aspect, a sort of pressurised um, feeling with the dragon's head in Aries in your second house of your resources, your net worth, <laughs> how you can kind of accrue them um, and what your values tell you you should do with them as well. So could be wrong, but there might be for some, some Pisces risings this kind of... Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of focus on this area of your life. We know this. We've talked about this in the um, the eclipse horoscopes. But I wonder if there's something here that we can kind of, let's piece it together. So it's kind of like the goddess house, Uranus, the rebel, the rebel witch is supporting this new moon, sort of supporting your intention setting insofar as who is your community. It kind of feels like there's sort of like a group coming together. I won't say coven, but maybe that's a good word for this. And the pressure is, okay, well, how am I going to turn this over? Is this something that I really do value? Do I have to monetize this? Maybe you don't. I mean, that's funny coming from me sitting here on my little um, stage with my pointy hat. Um, but not everyone has to monetize their this their essence, their very self. Some of us um, uh, spend so much time doing it. There's little room for anything else. So that's that, that's my choice, you know. Um, my I actually have a Capricorn Sun sign, so you can see there's that sort of single focus sometimes with the blinkers on of like right things to learn and to achieve. I shall do it. But that isn't to say that you are any less of a um, magic maker if. This is not going to be folded in to your resources or your, you know, your access to resources. Maybe that's a nice conversation that we can start here because we are going to be focusing in a lot on that over the next six months specifically uh, because we know that Chiron is present in Aries. There will be a conjunction with the dragon and Chiron. The dragon will be chomping down on Chiron, urging us to heal our money trauma, our... Um, yeah, our, our relationship with resources, perhaps our guilt around resources too. Um, I have been speaking to a lot of people that I love very much, um, one in particular, um, who says, well, if you've got nothing, you've got nothing to lose. And that's kind of the way that I've always lived my life and as has this um, beautiful person that I was speaking to as well. Of course, that's all well and good to say on a good day, on a bad day, it can be very stressful to continually be sort of scrabbling um, at the bottom line, you know. But there might be something around the sort of, like there might be a feeling of guilt around your resources. There might be feeling a feeling of guilt around your values not being truly, or not truly living up to your values. But we'll, but, but we'll work on it. And we've actually got a good chunky six months of activation there's lots of uh aspects that are involving chiron directly so we'll talk about them as the moons go by but let's pair it back i've completely run out of sand sorry pisces rising let's pair it back to quite simply setting our intention at this new moon in capricorn on the 11th of january if you're down here with me around my community my sense of friendship my sense of uh humanity i stand here at the very very precipice of a new year we're about to go into a lunar new year for the chinese in february we're about to go into a zodiacal new year in march so there's a lot of potential over the next three months there's a lot of um, intention settings available to us but also let's ease up from some of that kind of strictness about setting really harsh New Year's resolutions and then a couple of minutes later failing them and then feeling like a big failure yourself. Let's work with what we've got right here, Pisces Rising. Um, yeah, no tarot this time. Oh, you know what? 
to hell with it. It's the new year. I'll get you one card, I reckon. Let's just have one card and see what comes out before I go. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I've got lots of um, ideas for this year and I've got, I feel at this moment anyway, um, quite driven. Uh, well, look, okay, another bit of the astrology we can talk about too, Pisces, is that uh, the planet Mars will be in Capricorn at this new moon too, forming an exact trine with Jupiter in Taurus. So Mars activates the 11th house. Mars activates your sense of belonging in the human species and is speaking in a supportive way down to Jupiter in Taurus in the house of the goddess. And so that's just a huge magnifying glass. I think that there's, mm, if it's in terms, you know, we're all sort of looking for our people. I know I vacillate sometimes. I want to look for my people um, and then I want to be completely alone. <laughs> but I really do hope that in 2024, I realise that uh, I have love and affection offered to me from my people. Um, and it's just a matter of acknowledging that. And it's a matter of being proactive if I want to uh, voice my affection too. We got the fool. So see you, Cliff. Jump off. As Genesis Pjorge says, go for it. Go for it. Whatever I've said here has twigged, triggered some little thoughts or little wonderful ideas for you. So go for it. Buckle down. Get strict. Be a strict machine like Capricorn is. Go for it. Um, I'm here to help if you need. <laughs> Thanks, Pisces Rising. Um, you can drop me some tip money at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Umaruby. You can also subscribe to these horoscopes if you'd like, if you can afford it. It's um, 10 Australian dollars a month. Um, and that keeps me going here. Uh, yeah. I'd love that. Um, I can also read your birth chart if I've not before. They look like that over at umaruby.com. Book yourself in a spirit reading with me. If I have read for you before, you can book yourself a femme, truth, love, growth, or magic reading as well. Treat yourself. Um, if you're still here with me, Pisces Rising, drop me a goat in the comments in honor of Capricorn. I'll be with you in two weeks and we'll have a big chat about the Leo full moon. There's quite a lot of stuff happening in January, February, and March, um, so I'm trying to get as much of it out as I can that I can make sense of. But um, yeah, I'll see you then. Sorry it was too long. Bye. Mm -hmm.